Hello my valued viewers. Straight into last week's sales, welcome to the video. Braun Oral-B Power Supply, 550 delivered, but it cost me bugger all. Nikon Coolpix S3700, this is a red camera that I bought for £3 a couple of weeks back. Sold for 50 delivered, nice. Raptor 3D Game Stick, this is the one that I said wouldn't sell for £5, it sold for £3.99, £6 delivery. And obviously there's fees off the £9.99 that it came to. So it was a fail. Official multi-tap Sony PlayStation 1 multi-tap for four players. There aren't many four player games, so they weren't very popular. It went for 8.95, this is another fail. 8.95 plus postage though, so I made a few pence. It cost me a fiver. Oh, by the way, if you're new here, because there are a few new people about, thanks for subscribing. My name's Pete, and it says it in the title really, Pete's Retro Collectibles. Most of the stuff I sell is retro, electricals and electronics, games, but I also sell all sorts of other stuff. I mean, it's mostly on eBay. This is my eBay summaries. Next was a genuine Sony Ericsson power supply for an old phone. Yeah, I got 595 delivered. A vintage transistor radio from Sony. £20, it was the TFM7720L. Quite a nice three band receiver, a few little bits of wear on it. 2420. Bodum French Press coffee maker. 2020 delivered. The BT Ultra HD that I bought a couple of weeks ago, £60 delivered. He picked it up actually, it was £60 plus delivery, but they picked it up, so it was just 60 Tommy Tippy, closest to nature, teats. Two teats in a box for 720 delivered. They cost me a quid. Panasonic DMR EX773 DVD recorder, hard drive recorder, free view recorder, very useful. So that went for £43.95 plus postage. £8.51.95. SD card, 1 gig for the Wii Homebrew, 469 Now this was a, a bit of an unusual one. 2820 picture. This is the sum up printer for the 3G money making, money taking, you know, electronics for when they ban cash. Yeah, I bought the whole thing and it was £8, but the machine was bricked. I charged it, it powered up, and it said, This machine has been blocked. It cannot be unblocked, something daft like that. Anyway, I looked on the website and they said basically buy another one. That was the, the answer. So yeah, but the printer seemed in really good condition. So I charged that up and it charged up as well. And I put it on auction. Started it at, I think I started it at a fiver. Went for 24 pounds after a week. 24 plus four pound 20, 28, 20. Pretty happy with that. Um, I was surprised. Um, but it seems like they're going for like 150 quid new so the next one I sold was a book Which has been waiting a while, but I got really good money for the considering what I paid for it I think I paid 165 in my local charity shop It was a building preparing and racing mini Haynes manual and I got 21 pound delivered uh, I'd originally had it up for 25 pound Agfa family super 8 from a couple of weeks ago 10 pound plus postage though I thought I was going to be selling it for 10 pound delivered £14, 16 pence. Seiko ER3500, Oxford Crossword, Thesaurus, Dictionary, Solver, all the usual. This was not in the box, this was a loose one, 28 99 plus postage 33 19 Then I got a digital TV Freeview set top recorder. Oh, no, this one wasn't a recorder with SCART outputs. £21 plus postage 25 20 I do believe I put a SCART cable in with that. Next, a uh, Fujifilm 512 megabyte XD card in its original retail packaging, sealed. They'd bought it for an older camera, not knowing that just because it said Fujifilm on the front, it was going to not fit. Going to, they thought it was going to fit their camera. Obviously, the camera took smart media cards. This was an XD card. They don't match. So it never been opened. It was in the bottom of a camera that I bought. Three pounds. $27.95 delivered. I sent that sign for. Next there was another Seiko ER3500 but this one was in the box with a manual so I got $39.19 delivered. So yeah another £6 on top for having it in a box. Next was a Humax PVR TV recorder. HDD Freeview 320 gig hard drive $57.95 delivered. That went out on Saturday morning and then there was after that Breville Blend Active from got the box somewhere still there can you see that box there it's not full of anything it's full of stuff it's full of um a ps2 i believe but anyway i got the blend active machine 
the cutter and the two bottles for three pounds. I sold the first bottle for eight pound plus delivery. I sold the second bottle for eight pound plus delivery. I think it was eight pound. Might have been seven forty nine plus delivery. I sold the cutter on its own for fifteen pounds, and I've just sold the actual machinery for eight pound plus four pound twenty, twelve pound twenty delivered. Yeah, they're a bargain. They are even at retail price. You could make more than they cost in parts. Right now we're into what's going out today and. I'm going to stop halfway through this to make a bit of a debate, but we'll we'll carry on for the moment. Five ninety nine for one of these. That's not anything to do with the debate. They're basically give away at that price because my postage is three fifty. I won't be buying any more of these. They do add to your feedback, but look at my feedback. If, if you don't know, I've got like seventy odd thousand feedback. I don't even look at it. And I only check to see if there's any negatives. It's very rare. It's very rare. Okay, next was. Sony, it's a Sony, DVP SR370, I paid £8 for this a couple of weeks ago, and it's gone for £24.79, it was new in the box, all I did was, well I did check it, I did turn it on, Just take a few photos, put it back in its box and tape it up, £28.99 delivered, and this is one of the things I'm going to say to you, I also sold Panis, Panasonic camera, SDR S50, it's um, one of those little flip out screens. It runs on a card, runs on a battery. The battery's there, the charge is there. And I got £38 plus postage, £42.20. Now I could have held out for more, but I didn't. Next, Canon M700. Another camcorder in the bag with the charger, with a manual, with a tape. £55 plus postage, £61. Now I could have held out for more, but I didn't. It went on an offer. Next, Dad's Army. 8.95 delivered, which is, it's got a little bit of damage there. That's the only thing, it's sealed it, it's new. Uh, I was only expecting 6.95, I put it on, I put 8.95. I'd have taken 6.95 on an offer, but they paid the full price. Now, that is the end of the week. I do have some more stuff going out, but that's for next week, or rather this week. This was last week. The total for last week was 679.70. Much more like it. And one of the reasons I sold so much was because I was selling stuff that was newly listed. I think one of the things that to get the sales is the discounting scheme that I'm doing. I started off a little bit more than I expect to get. I put offers on them and I put a 2% promotion. I don't like the promotions. I've never liked the promotions since they introduced them. And if you didn't know, they introduced them as a beta about 15 years ago. But there were only four people with like corporate retail. Didn't have it on, on for us, mere mortals as it were. But I was invited into it. I joined it when I was doing retail and I started doing promotions one, two, three, five percent without doing discounts and I found that the discounting worked a lot, lot better than the promotions. So I just stopped doing it. It was a beta then and I just stopped. And now if you don't promote, you don't get seen. So, but is discounting better the value than promotion? And the answer is definitely yes. For instance, this one, Canon, I listed this on the 26th. It sold on the 26th on an offer. Because I had it up at 59.95, or was it 64.95? Something daft like that. A, a, a high price, but with offers on. And as soon as people started watching it, I was sending offers to them. Buyers offers, you know, send a buyer an offer. It used to be send watchers offers. Now it's send interested buyers. People who wandered onto your site, looked at it, they get sent an offer. And I was sending offers in the 59 pound region. So. They suddenly get £5 off immediately. I mean, within hours. Within hours. And then somebody sent me an offer of 55 Now, do I, on the one hand, hold out for more? Full price. 64 99 which I probably would have got eventually. Or do I sell it off at £55? Now, it took under a day to sell. And it cost me £8. £8 into 55 minus fees and then there's six pound postage which that'll definitely cover that 
it's quite a big bag. So with the six pound looks after the postage and all the commission on the postage. So there we go. So it's eight pound into 55 pound in a day or hold out for a fortnight and hope to get over 60. My answer is simple, discount. And make sure that the customer knows it's a reasonable discount by putting maybe 5% on to start with and then you're giving you 10% discount. Or give you 5% discount as soon as somebody starts watching it. If you didn't know with the offers to watchers, your 5% is the minimum. Now with promotions at 2%, that's 7% off the maximum price. So I bump the maximum price up so that it looks like a better deal. You know, over the years in retail, if you don't know, at least 50,000 of them, my feedback is from the retail I had before selling secondhand goods. And what I used to do was, which I learned from some of the other sellers in my field, they would start their stuff, especially if it was new stock, new to them, new to the retailer, the retailer had just brought it in or just started a new line. Um, they would start it off at maybe 110% of retail price because they couldn't get hold of it or they would have to order it specially in from the retailer to sell. So rather than do that, they would have priority delivery direct from the retailer. I used to get that, but you had to pay per delivery. So for instance, I would have to pay nine or 10 pounds for a delivery of a power tool direct like from Draper or somewhere to a customer, which is, you know, it's not unsubstantial, but if you're selling a little bit more than retail, that's okay. But then, once it had been around for a month and they'd had time to order it in and decide how many they were going to need and maybe get three or four in stock, they could then bring the price right down as a discount. And it looks like, oh, we've got this new product, but we're discounting it specially for you. That's not what the case is. They were just bringing it down to what they would normally sell it for on eBay. But it looks like, with especially with those strike through prices in the red mark, that you're getting a really good deal. and. It works every time. I'm not saying you sell every single thing that everybody looks at, but what I am saying is the customer feels like they're getting a bargain. And if you remind them it's a bargain by having those straight through prices, people love it. And you do sell more, despite the fact you might have sold some at 110% or 100% of retail in the first month, but the month after that, discounted. Well, I'm going that bit further. I start it and within hours I'm discounting because I've started it at a price where I can afford to discount. Alternatively, you can wait a month and a half. I know which one I would rather do. Simple as that. Right, back into the rest of what's going out. So the next thing going out is a Casio FX83 GT Plus, 895 plus postage. Well, it is school time, back to school, isn't it? People do need these for school and it is a lot cheaper than buying in retail. 11 a 15 Next was another one of those Trivial Pursuits. And then another one of those Trivial Pursuits and I'm nominally out of them. That's uh, five in the last month. I don't think I'll be buying any more because although they're only really small and they're easy sells, they're just not like the profit margin on something this size. It's what nearly twice the size, but it's like 50 odd pound. Next was, Sony BDP 185 multi region DVD. Well, it wasn't multi region. I multi regionalized it with my remote. I paid a fiver for this one with the remote. It sold for £39.95. I might have only paid £4 if it wasn't multi region, region free, you know. Anyway, that went for £39.95 instead of maybe £23. Plus postage, £4.15. And then there was a printer power supply. HP, PSU, there's the number, I put a picture up, and that went for £6 plus postage, 10 20 Another one of these feet for BT hubs, or EE plus net, they do them as, um, as well. Anyway, that foot there went for 6 65 delivered, and it's, uh, I'm out of them now, that means I've sold four in the last fortnight or so, maybe three weeks, but I do have a new BT hub, however, it's new in the box that I bought this week, so probably not. It might sell as it is. Another joystick, the big flight sim. This is the Logitech version, so it went for a bit more than the last one. This was 9.99 plus postage, 14.19. It's actually too big for the four pound twenty box, but everyone else was selling it free post anyway, so that cost me two, and like I say, with the with the packaging, 
I'll probably retain, retain eight and I've got to pay the post uh, the fees on 14. Not too bad, but it was promoted as well. And then the last thing going out this week up to now is Buzz sound spot earphones I did clean them very thoroughly and test them uh, there's a bit of a stain on the box the guy overlooked that he sent me a nice email and said would it be possible to have them at a discount and i'm like yeah why not um i paid a fiver i sold it for 50 pounds and 80 pence they were listed on the 23rd and they sold on the 28th so yeah happy with that and uh four pound 20 postage so it was 55 pound altogether not bad at all so up to now this week 153 pounds 32 it was a decent weekend right i'll show you what i bought at the boot sales coming up shortly it's time for pickups so north cave first off uh, i got there fairly early it was still drizzling a little bit but nothing special it was going to be nice and sunny that's so i thought anyway i got a uh, scrabble for 50 pence jumanji for 50 pence guy was a motivated seller they're in both really good condition could have hung around and bought other things off him but quite honestly he had a lot of jigsaws and stuff and quite honestly i'm not interested in those it's too much work um so next was this one off a different stall along the same lines buccaneer by waddington's uh yeah waddington's it's a 1970 version i think yeah John Waddington's of Leeds. However, it's not complete. It's got a nice board. Let me just get it open. Nice board. Um, two sets of instructions. Four ships. One of which is uh, missing its mast, but it's got a sail. And then it's got lots of cards which are mostly there um, it's got all the chance cards um, I've got crew cards that there's a few missing and then it's got five pieces of gold there's also meant to be five rubies but there's only one five diamonds if I can pick them up can't pick them up there's two of those five pearls but there's one of those five barrels there isn't any of those and somebody's put a wooden bead in instead of a barrel and that's it yeah oh two sets of rules so i'll be selling this for spares selling the parts rather as spares for people to to sell these single sheet of paper rules it's like a folded over piece of paper it's actually selling for four pounds that and then i've got two of those and then all the cards will sell for a few quid the board might sell you never know um i'm even tempted to try and sell the box on its own but it is a bit battered it's not damaged there's no corner breakage so it might sell uh that was a quid so uh it's a bit of a fail um i pounced on it looked through it i realized there was a lot missing out of it but a quid i wasn't going to like you know knock it back on the same stall i bought a little wooden bowl it needs some mr sheen on it it's a bit worn on the inside there um but it's got like brass inlay on the outside handmade probably by somebody in india if it's got brass inlay um 50 pence i've had no trouble selling bowls with it lately well when they sell i've got a couple that I haven't sold yet but they're not as nice as that um next there was this off the next stall along which uh put batteries in it and it's working anyway that's a yamaha pss 30 and now i've got that for a pound he wanted two but i said to him would you take one and he said he would which was nice now they can go for as much as 25 pounds in good condition it needs a clean 
well I will clean it it's well worth the time and then um, I got one whoops books gone west I bought one of these which is a BT smart hub 2 um, it just says smart hub but it's the number it's edition 2 uh, brand new in the box and it's got power supply and it's got feet so you know do I sell the feet separately and the power supply separately when it cost four pounds he wanted a fiver but he accepted four um, and a pound on the other thing um, I could probably make a tenner straight off selling it in its box brand new so that's what I'll try to do first and then if he doesn't sell and make me a tenner profit minus fees um, then I'll split it I will have no trouble making um, three pound on each foot and like a five pound on the power supply but it's three sales as opposed to one um, so I will try to sell that as a complete unit just for the sake of getting the same margin quickly rather than not quickly right um, I got these two USB cards sorry sticks they're not like the, the last 64 gigs ones I had were um, ma micro USB not micro USB micro SD cards but these are quite handy if you want to just shove 64 gigs of stuff from my laptop like for instance pictures I don't have to go through big files on a, on a hard drive I can just stick this in the side with all the pictures on um, and 64 gigs isn't that many pictures I get through at least two gigs of pictures a day um, when I'm listing things I mean, most people you know um, I don't have any trouble whacking 25 30 40 pictures out of the same item then just picking the nice ones out and it's easy than editing them and you know trying to make each nice picture nicer um, it's probably having a white background is slowing me down I know in my new um, scheme I'm gonna have a, a grayer white and sort of you know um, not completely white background which isn't as good for the eBay uh, on Google pictures if they submit them to Google that's another thing altogether it seems that the people who are submitting them to Google are crawling eBay sites and using different systems like for instance PickClick and there's another couple of others that get commissions for putting stuff onto Google I haven't seen many eBay advertisements when I look something up on Google images it doesn't go straight to eBay it goes to those people and then it goes through to eBay just saying eBay charging us for promotion on Google and they're not doing it and then they say oh it's because you haven't got white background um, no a lot of my stuff's got white background all right next there was some games I've done those the pictures are already up um, from the next store from the one keyboard the, the one pound keyboard I got a, a much bigger keyboard this is a Casio CT370 um, it has a power supply but it's not the original it's a Maplin multi adapter but it's the right voltage well you can yeah it's 600 milliamps um, and this doesn't say what amperage it is but it works fine for it um, this is an output current of 9 volts 600 milliamps it works it however it also takes double uh, not double D D that's the little the little one takes double A's this one takes D's and this one has a another you know demo quite a nice keyboard oh. with like so, lots of different voices 120 different tones um, 
and then there's different volume controls as well. Quite a nice keyboard, but it doesn't have a screwing base. It's meant to have a, a screwing set of legs. It's meant to have um, a wire rack for holding the music up. It doesn't have either of those. The ones that I have are going for 40, 48 pounds. There is somebody, the problem with these is this, the weight and the size. There's somebody trying to get 18 pound for one with all the bits, but it's collect only. And then there's somebody else trying to get 48 pound for one. And there's somebody starting an auction at 40 pounds plus postage on top. So I'll probably go for something like 35 pounds. It might be postage on top. It might be including postage, depending on, you know, what the sales situation is. I might start it at, at like, uh, I don't know, 38.99 as a buy it now with offers with £10 postage on and then see how that goes and then discount it or add the postage in. There's a lot of options and that's the problem with these things. There's a lot of options in ways to sell them and there's, you know, not that many sold. So we're not certain of that. Then I got a fake Onyx lamp. Plastic, plastic. This is real metal, this is real metal, this is real metal, but it's not real brass, it's that injection molded shitty metal that's, uh, you know, it's mostly zinc with a bit of colouring on. Um, there you go. So the really only real thing about it is the electrical system, and there isn't a plug on it. And it's dirty. But it costs two pounds, so I'll give it a clean and see what I can get for it. I don't expect huge things. The guy sold me it. He said, do you want a, a shade for it as well? Now I'm thinking like, you know, scallop shaped, different sides, a bit of brocade. I said, oh yeah, I might be interested in that. And he like pulled out of the back of his can. It's just like one of them round ones with a, a flat side. I'm like, nah, <laughs> sorry, right, I'll just give you the two pound for that. Um, as it is, the cable, yeah, it's not particularly nice. I might replace it with one of those ones with an inline switch. Um, that looks okay. It, could, it hasn't got the ring for the top end, but they, they're they easy to find. Um, I have that big bag full of hanging down uh, uh, light buttons. Well, one of those will fit that. I got two memory cards off a guy who was clearing out his computer shop. He had hard drives and all sorts, but I, he wanted too much for those. These were good. Um, 64 gig, 64 gig, two pound, two pound. Asked him for two for three pound, he wouldn't do it. He was selling eight gig cards for a pound, but um, two 64s, not bad, two pound each. Um, last time I bought 64s, I got five for 20 quid, and I was quite happy with that. Those will sell for six or seven quid, but I think I'll keep them they're useful is the the um the other ones i've found very useful for things like storing pictures in where i know i can get them instead of having to wait and find you know dig through big files on a hard drive so um i also got some video games off the next stall now you know i've been buying bulk video games the last few weeks um because they were available and I, I do like, like to have a nice big backlog. I've probably got a backlog of 250 Xbox, no, sorry, 250 PS2 games, 100 Xbox 360, and now I've got about 40 or 50 Xbox games. Well, these, um, none of them. PS3, this one's Hitman Absolution, but it is the the one with the special edition book art book and then the ps3 game in a nice glossy special edition box it's the professional edition one um, that was a quid and then i got paid up for this one metal gear solid 4 because i I'm, i had it in the past but i wanted to play the special espionage edition a lot more sneaking about I think. Anyway, that's for me. That's okay. Um, 
when I sell it, it'll only go for. I paid two pound for that. When I sell it, it'll only go for four to five pound. Um, and then I got these three for two pound for the three games. Um, my Sims, they're just going me. We we bundles. Tomb Raider in the Wild Edition, Underworld. Sorry, not edition. Um, yeah. And let's go to the city, Animal Crossing, which um, is a favourite among people. And it's got its manual and the disc's really nice, as far as I remember. Yeah, really spotlessly clean. So that'll pay for the others, plus all the profits on top. So there's five games and two of them, between them, I'll sell it for a 20 and I paid um five so it's not too bad uh yeah it was five um so yeah that was nice and that was the end of north cave i spent 23 pound 50 there such is life sometimes you go and you're expecting cameras dvd players blu-ray players um little knickknacks all sorts of stuff they're just not there. Sometimes it's just not there, you know. There's a guy selling sports equipment. When I say sports equipment, I mean brand new, like um, footballs and hockey sticks and things like that. There's people selling clothes. There's people selling um, potted plants and stuff to put in your borders. It's that type of year, isn't it? Time of year. Actually, it's too late for that, but they still were selling them. Um, tomato plants all sorts of crap no let me let me explain crap compared with what I want for me for people who like their gardening and all that that's fine right um next I went to Hull bought some more gear nothing special but I will get it off the floor because it fell down from earlier on uh, I found a stall the first stall I bought anything from Actually, no, the first stall I bought anything from, so I've written it down in the wrong order, is that lamp. It was all a dream, but it wasn't, because I paid £2 for it, I got it home, it didn't work. Where the wire goes into it, it pulled out a little bit, so it just needed a spot of solder. So now it's working. So that was nice. Um, yeah, well worth £2. I think they're selling it for about 30 But... I don't think I'll sell it. It's because it's, you know, I don't know whether you'd call that bespoke or just larger than the normal ones. Uh, so that was two pound. Next I went to a stall and everything was a pound. It was shouting, everything's a pound. And it was all marked up with, uh, what would you call them? Uh, lotto numbers, not lotto numbers. Um, you know, coat hanging numbers. Uh, like it's been on a tombola, that's it, tombola. So I think he'd, he'd either spent an awful lot at a charity tombola stall in order to get what he wanted to win, or it just like bought the dregs off him. I don't know. But I would say three quarters of the stuff was marked up. And sometimes it's damaged the box a little bit. I'm not sure whether that's actually the box being damaged there, but this was the first one I bought. This is the child sculpted mug. There's no handle. I think you have to hold it by the ears to drink out of it. But who drinks out of these things, really? Who drinks out of these things? They're designed as mugs. But nobody really uses them as mugs. You'd be a mug to use it. It's display, isn't it? Anyway, it's fine inside. It's in polystyrene. And um, that was a pound. So probably sell for six or eight plus postage um, next was yeah these are a fail I paid a pound for this one and a pound for this one I've had this sort of thing before and it's taken forever to sell and it's sold for silly stupid money like four pound forty and yeah when I've looked these up there's no there's people trying to sell them there's no history of actually selling I think it's for a defunct machine um, that is no longer used in offices and let's face it where else would you use one where you got 
three colours or more plus a black this size the machine would have to be industrial size wouldn't it and those people have already replaced their um, printers a long time ago uh, it doesn't even say what machine it's for I suppose you have to know Oh, series 1500 to 2500 HP laser jet yeah well at a pound a piece I picked them up anyway and I should have known better you know never mind next I got a tripod there we go it's only little but that was pound on the stall as well yeah can't go wrong really it's even got the actual uh, bit that holds the camera a lot of them that's got lost or you know if it's got one of those um, you know quick release hot shoes then the quick release hot shoe part is missing well this one just has the screw in part but the actual knobs still there so yeah pound can't go wrong really always come in handy tripods I find um, so I got it for a pound and he said to me, oh, there's something else that goes with that. And I'm like, what? What? I can't see anything. And he says, oh, there it is. Oh, what is it? <laughs> what it is, is um, it's like a monocular, but it's not a monocular. It's one of these, a sighting scope. You uh, expand it like that and you can use it for bird watching or sniping if you're a sniper <laughs> they're basically that's what they are you attach that to the um, to the where the uh, the tripod and you can adjust it here for your eye and then there's a, a zoom lens bit there these are going for really good money but this one's if you look it's quite worn a lot of the paints either damaged or marked so it's quite old but it's Bresser which is as far as I know a good name in these and it's got us like a sprung eyepiece holder so it keeps dust out and stuff with the obligatory don't look into the sun sign I think they have to put that in by law anyway that was a pound as well with its case don't think it'll fetch much maybe 15 maybe 12 something like that because it's marked on the outside but the lenses I've checked them out I've looked at things in the far distance like you meant to and it works fine and there was one other thing no two we'll get to the last one last Disney Parks mug this is um, Disneyland Resort Paris is what they call it now don't they instead of Disneyland Paris was it anyway it's uh, clean it's never been used and it's got Mickey on in a sort of I don't know what you call it frosted look finish it's like um, sugar frosting anyway that was a quid should sell all right and the last one was this which if you know you know these are awfully expensive it's very similar to the, well it's a Seiko, it's like the ones I've been selling except this is the one with a much bigger screen and nice buttons unfortunately it's got the same fault as all the others um, the screen's not displaying I put a battery in it, two batteries in fact and it's producing one single line right across um, so I might repair this and I might sell it as spares and repair cost me a pound it will go for well over a hundred pound working however it's not working so is it worth my while to, you know trying to repair it just for the experience I might fluff it because it's smaller the screens bigger and obviously with a lot more de data on it the screen the cables probably smaller and more detailed but you know got a bit of experience in these now I've done maybe 15 of them so I might go and have a go with this one um, depending on what I can get if I can get 30 quid for it without repairing it spares a repair I might just do that um, 
and then I got a Panasonic phone system. Uh, I don't get this, but um, I said to the guy, "How much do you want for these phones?" And he's got a Panasonic main base, and then three phones on charging bases with chargers. There you go. And he said a fiver. And I'm like, nah, how about three? And then we've got the main base here, but there's no charger on this one. But it doesn't matter because none of these phones will fit into this. <laughs> this phone and this phone are different. So we've got three different types and that phone matches the second phone. We've got three different types a phone in this one system which seems a bit weird but we've got two of the chargers that I've been selling for eight quid each and a different one that's a different number so this is a yeah this is a PNL V 226e which I'm already selling and this one's a, a PQL V um, 2190 which I've been selling for £8 but with a handset and a base I sell this for 15 got two of those I might get 12 for this one and then I might just throw that one away because without a base I don't think most people would want to buy it it's got no compatible phones with it and quite honestly I could do without messing about for the extra few pound when I've already got I don't know 35 40 pound out of the other handsets well they cost me three pounds I'm happy with that don't overlook phones BT or Panasonic I think any of the other makes they're just not worth bothering you know um, maybe if you got a Doro phone and it's um, got all its accomplishments and it's in the box fine G Mac you know the big button ones they can sell well but don't pay more than a pound or two for them um, right and then I got that as well don't forget um, I've already mentioned that I paid two pound for it but it's down here as the last thing I bought I don't think it is but it doesn't matter right that's all I got in Hull despite going around twice I was looking for more, I was being discerning, except for those HP inks, toners. I was being discerning, except for those HP toners, which uh, I shouldn't have picked up. Um, so I only spent um, £12 there. So I came away and I spent £35.50 all day. I got some nice stuff. Plus I've got, I've got about six or seven AV items to go and list in the next couple of days I've been doing a lot of AV lately and I've also got the consoles that I bought in the last couple of weeks which I haven't listed yet what's to be getting on with that's a lot go and get listing if you're a seller I'm gonna do the same see you later